Oh, oh. hello, handsome. Hey. Hi. Hey. Last time. Last time I saw you was at a bar after the forum. Last time I saw you, I remember being, I was floating after our conversation because I was telling everybody on here that you are one of my favorite conversationalists. Wow. Yeah. I'm going to be amazing this morning, I'm telling you. It's incredible. Can, you hear, so, can you hear I, me well? I can hear you so well, Nicole. Okay, good. Yeah. How are you? Are you... Uh, are you uh, tucked in and well? I'm doing well. I've I've found my rhythm and my groove. Um, I have good it, days and bad days, but it took a minute, though, right? It took a hot minute. Like I thought, the first couple of weeks, I've never felt so much anxiety in my entire life. But and I'm good. Get, and how did you get over the anxiety? Finding my rhythm, a routine. I'm um I have kind of a messy head, so I need a routine. So. Waking up, finding the time to work out, work, like just a routine, finding people to talk to, conversations to get into, um, just like a groove, you know? Yeah. I, I find that, that the, the beginning of this was really scary. You know, it was just unknowable. And it was like this high speed, like disruption of, of our lives. And like when things scare me, the way that I the way that I get over it is to understand them. So like, I, I spent like the first 10 days just, just trying to get information. That's it. That was a smart and, uh, and now, and now like, you know, I think if you look at this from the idea that you're, you are, you're safe at home, not stuck at home, yeah. um, is, is like, He's into the idea that this is a mindset. Like, if you get your mind in the in the right place about about this, then um, you are you will be you. That gets everybody healthy. Gets yeah. you healthy. You know what I mean? I agree. Um, I'm going to start by saying um, hello to everybody watching. My name is Nicole Alvarez for Radio.com. Um, Stephen, congratulations tonight. We're going to world premiere the video for Ways, and then we have a never seen performance on Radio. Calm live and the beat goes on. So I'm excited. I saw the video because you know I know people. Oh, you did? I did. So but we're gonna we're gonna get to that. Last week I was watching you make the perfect margarita. Yeah. And you taught me about a song, a, a Bombay Bicycle Club song that I now love, and then that led me to your Spotify curated playlist. Which, by the way, really good stuff, man. You've you've got a good ear. Thank you. I am. Um, I... Like that Bombay Bicycle Club is one of those things where it's like, I was never really, like, I kind of liked them. I liked one song before, but it took, it took um, Eat, Sleep, Wake to like open up their whole catalog to me. And now I'm like, I'm a big Bombay Bicycle fan. Like, just love them. Yeah, I so. learned that by watching you so happily make a margarita. Um, so the way that this works, this is called a pandemic, and we have questions from everywhere, from Alt 92.3 in New York, from The Buzz in Seattle, HFS in Baltimore, Alt in Dallas, Vegas, Miami Station, Portland, all over. So, those are all my stations. Yeah. Those are, all, those are like, these are like all like feel like home stations. Like, like um, I key into those when, when we're on tour. Those are the stations I go visit. So what's up, everybody? Hey. So yeah. I picked I picked the questions which I was most intrigued by. Um, and the ones that I, knowing you the way that I do, the ones that I'd want to see you answer because you're so, you're so, um, you're so charismatic. So first question, ready? What is the most significant musical moment of your life? Oh, I never have any of those. Really? Just, no. I think it was, there was a girl in like, maybe like in like the fourth grade and um, I had a huge crush on her um, and she had like, like kind of like dark black hair and she was a little older and she was like, she was like the color of like, I don't know, like a gray morning. And I don't even if you know what I mean. And I like, knew her, her house was in my neighborhood and I walked up to her house um, and I just wanted to see if I could see her in the window. So literally, I was like a fourth grade peeping Tom stalker. 
And in the window, um, her big brother was listening to Led Zeppelin. And it, it, it seems so like dangerous and like, just like sexual, even though at fourth grade, I didn't know what that was, but like the media, <laughs> yeah, that it was like, it was dangerous. And I was like, I want some danger too. Could be that moment. Okay, that's exactly what I'm talking about. I'm so glad you gave me that answer. Um, the next answer, I mean, the next question is this pandemic quarantine, burden or opportunity? You say burden or opportunity? Correct. Opportunity. Yep. I mean, look, you know, the sky has never been bluer in our whole lifetimes. You never hear jets. There's this uh, leatherback turtles are like crowding the beaches and all the ones that, that are rested in place. We're recognizing that um, work has value and that uh, people who do jobs like bagging groceries are essential. We, I bet everybody who's listening right now has, has had more interaction with their neighbors in the last month than they have in the last five years. So sure. there's a lot of possibilities to, um, to, to like bring out our, our better selves, I think for sure. Okay. Yeah. I like that. I like that. It's a shift of perspective. All right. Next question. I think I can answer this, but for you, but introvert or extrovert? This is something mm -hmm. that people are really learning about themselves right now in quarantine, whether they're one or the other. Yeah, I'm not one or the other. I mean, I, um, I, I would say that I'm probably more introvert than extrovert, which really surprises people since like, you know, I get up on stage in front of lots of people for a living, but I need, a, for me, I don't know that these kinds of, I mean, that's somebody's idea of describing you. They don't know who the fuck you are. Like, exactly. that's not how it works. This is, this, it, it, it's more like, I need a lot of time to kind of gather. Um, so that's alone, alone time. And then I need time to like, have impact with people. And if I, if I, if I don't have these things into some kind of balance um, in an ecosystem within myself, then, um, I'm uh, I'm out of it. So um, right. I kind of reject the premise of the question: introvert, extrovert. If you ever know anybody who's an extrovert, they're utterly intolerable and obnoxious. And if you know anybody who <laughs> is an introvert, you know, then you can't even like you can't even deal with them. They they don't even kind of show up in your mental screen. So people, people listen that I'm a I'm an extrovert because of what I do for a living, um, yeah. and I. I have, I, I guess I sh sure I have extrovert tendencies, but I need, I need alone time. So I am, yeah. um, I appreciate your answer very much. Okay. Like, You're on like stage. You, Nicole, for Nicole. So like, so like, you know, like I, I know you, so I know that you like people who are, are listening to, to you right now, this is actually what she's like. However, once you go on, once you go on um, air, it's like, it's like you're yourself, but more yourself. And then, then there's after that, there's a time where you like need to shut down and you yeah. know just kind of close it off so you can so you can kind of bring it back. It's just a rhythm. And it's a rhythm. You're the same way, right? Yep, exactly the same way. Okay, the next question. Um, this person, Jessica in Texas, wants to know about your onstage persona. Um, is it? Is it real or do you turn it up? I want to say something before you answer that. I remember seeing you the most, I've seen you so many times, but specifically at Governor's Ball, the last Governor's Ball that you played and you weren't feeling well and it was hot as balls. And I was right in the front, I was by the railing. And I, you were so honest with the crowd and so engaging. I've never doubted that you are exactly who you are on stage. Like, I don't think that's a persona at all. I just wanted to say that. Now you can answer for yourself. It comes across beautifully is what I'm saying. Oh, it's so sweet. Yeah. Uh, no, that's me. It's just more me. Yeah. It's just okay. like, like just me like amplified. Yeah. Okay. So in a world where you can get in bed with any type of business, why tequila? <laughs> oh, 
Um, well, it's not really a business. It's something that I started uh, just making for me and my friends and, and, and the way that we live um, and how we, how we, the kind of the ritual of celebration that we have when we're together. And that's kind of all over the world. And um, I kind of got into tequila. This is really odd thing to say for health reasons in that drinking is bad for you. And um, with kind of like the whole paleo thing, it's like you don't drink, but, um, but if you do drink, you drink tequila because it's kind of, it's the purest. So I kept looking for more and more pure tequila. And then my manager was like, look, you, you know so much about this. You talk about this shit so much. Why don't you just make your own? I'm like, what do you mean make my own? She's like, figure it out. Let's go down to Mexico. Um, and we started meeting distillers and learning about the process. And I realized that there was a way of making tequila um, that people weren't doing <clears throat> here, um, which is all based on purity. Um, and so I was like, all right, let's make some. And then um, she kind of turned it into a business, really. So um, I just kind of fell into it is the short answer. Okay. All right. Um, so I, I saw a motorcycle drive by. Oh, well, you have to tell everybody what that is. Okay. So motorcycle drive by, I kind of wanted you to explain it, but it's a, it's a, would you say it's a documentary about the song? Yeah. Okay, it's a documentary about the song. And it's was not my documentary, by the way. I didn't make it. I'm just, I'm just in it. So I have so many questions. I can't, I can't wait to get to it. But it's, it's shot in black and white. It's so beautiful. It was supposed to premiere at the Tribeca Film Festival, but then this whole pandemic thing happened, and so everybody has to wait. But I had the pleasure of watching it. I was, I didn't want it to be over. I'm so that's glad that you chose that song because that's the song. So my best friend, that's his song. And I always knew it, but he made me see that song through, through, through his eyes. And it's always mm -hmm. had this power for him. And I, being able to see that it has that same power for so many people was really interesting. So tell me about how this project came along. And then I want to ask you a few questions about things that I saw in the documentary. Uh, there's a filmmaker, his name's David Wexler. And he had done um, this acclaimed uh, documentary about the guardian angels in the 70s. And he approached us about uh, doing uh, a project and he wanted to do um, one on, on me. And I wasn't interested in having a documentary done on me. Or, um, um, and we, we talked a little bit and he, he, it, it just kind of came up in the course of conversation that uh, there were songs that people um, used as kinds of a means of identity that um, were never played on the radio that, that the wider public doesn't know. And, and he said, you're kind of like a cult band. You're like an underground band, which is, which is really weird because everybody knows Third Eye Blind, but you're actually, you're actually an underground band. And um, I said, yeah, so talk about that. And that's, that's much more interesting than, than doing a documentary about me, I thought. Um, and um, But so I learned so much about you. It's, you're also, it, it was a very clever way of kind of opening up who you are, because you're right, it's not completely about you. It's a lot of it, a lot of it has to do with the fans of the song, but I've learned so much about you. And it was endearing, dare I say. He's a good filmmaker. Um, He's a great filmmaker. But you know, I just never thought like, I don't know, I just never thought that, that I would be chosen for, uh, I mean, that this film would be, would be a selection for the Tribeca Film Festival. And, um, I was thrilled. Um, I immediately, um, like, you know, rented out uh, a big hotel room for it at the Bowery Hotel, and, and uh, you know, I was like picking out, picking out a nice dinner jacket to wear at this thing. I was so excited, and and, uh, and so it'll, it'll go online somehow. You know, there'll be some way that will that it'll get put out there. Um, but I'm really glad to enjoy it because you know, I find it very difficult to watch myself. I don't. I don't, I don't, like, I, I direct my video and I watch it a bunch of times, but once it's up there, like, 
I, I'm not one of those people who goes around and plays his own videos or looks at my own pictures and things like that. It is magnificent. There's a, one scene that made me really emotional, and it was at Joe's Beach. And um, you stop and you tell the crowd, well, first of all, you were playing for the people that got there super early, like the hardcore fans, and you made some sort of comment, and you're like, my friends aren't even from New York, aren't even here yet, but I'm playing the hardcore fans yeah. are here. But you stop and you tell everybody to look around to somebody that they've never seen before and to say, like, I'm so glad you made it. I'm so glad you're here. And then I saw people yeah. in the audience hugging. And it made me so emotional because right now we can't do that. Uh, man, the things we take for granted. But that was a powerful scene. It really was. There's a really, like, there's a really beautiful thing, those moments in your life where, you know, you, you take a hold of a stranger um, and you recognize this likeness of feeling and you just, just hold them, you know? That's like Best. the whole concept of fellowship. And... Um, um, it's those random moments of, of human touch uh, that we, that I miss for sure. I, I love that moment. You know, we, we went on stage early because there was a lightning storm coming. Yeah. Um, the Jones Beach in New York. And they said we had to cancel the show. We just had to cancel the whole show. And um, we were backstage. And I was like, how soon is the lightning storm coming? <laughs> and they said, it's going to be here in like 80 minutes. And I go, let's just go on. How soon can we go on stage? And they're like, the stage isn't ready. I'm like, how soon can you have the stage ready? And they're like, 20 minutes. We're going on stage in 20 minutes. <laughs> we'll just wait until the lightning storm gets here. So, um, and, you know, it wasn't our show time. So it was like, uh, we just went on early and played um, a little bit. And it was one of my favorite shows of the tour. I can't wait for people to see this. Um, Bell use of rain too. That's the other thing. It was like it was like playing in the shower. Oh God, how awesome! Um, so tonight, Radio.com is exclusively premiering the video for Ways, and then we're going to get a performance from you on Radio.com live, and the beat goes on. Tell me about Ways, because I watched it, and it's another one that made me a little emotional because it made me want to be outside, carefree, skateboarding with my friends. Yeah. Um, so the video is kind of the day in the life of uh, the, the skate scene in San Francisco. And, you know, I see these guys, these, these, these people out there. And it's so beautiful because um, they're like, they're like race indifferent, gender indifferent, um, ability indifferent. And it's a super aggressive culture with no violence in it. It's crazy. Like, it's so dangerous what they're doing. Uh, just you're slapping concrete. And yet there's no, like, macho bullshit. Like, there's no, like, there's none of those, like, punk bitches with their guns out, you know, making up for their little there's none of that crap it's like this yeah. real feeling of like and and so it's kind of like this one trans skater named Cher and it's about kind of just walking through her day and um the song the song is like talks about um really about how you know I don't have it's kind of looking at the concept of like you know, you don't have like material shows of wealth or status. What you've got is like this energy and feeling and that is your value and what you have to trade. So it's like, you might only call me dude. Like you don't even like know my name, but like, but like what I have is legendary, you know? And I love, I love that kind of mindset. I love that scrapper uh, mentality. And they just all kind of fit together. So I looked at Cher and I was like, um, you're the California rude boy, you know? And, and I kind of loved, I loved it that she's trans. So the idea, you always call me dude, you never call me by my name. I thought that was kind of funny. Um, it's a great and song. Too. And so she was, she was just, she, you know, she's a skater who um, works at Supreme and She's never acted or anything like that. And she just lit it up. You know, I just thought she was the star of the video. And the other thing is, I made that video, um, I made that video for $9,000, which is, Nothing. you know. 
Yeah, it's not even the catering budget for um, lunch on the video for, uh, you know, uh, Drake, which is clearly my direct competition. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to get to one, one more. Um, let's see. There's two. Okay. Um, in this shelter at home era, this is from Marco in, po in Portland. In this shelter at home era, what have you learned about yourself that might have surprised you? I can sleep way more than I actually give myself credit for. Um, yeah, and I can really, like, I, I used to only get maybe like six and a half, seven hours. Now I get like seven and a half, eight hours. And I feel way better. Thank okay. you, Marco. Good to, good to know. Um, and then I want to point out your, this is something that I don't know if everybody knows and that maybe I'm not supposed to know or something, but I know that you, I know that you care a lot about your crew and I know that you're taking care of them and I want people to know how hard a crew works. Cause I think people just go to shows and they, they show up and they think just the rock stars just come on stage, sing a song, sing a couple of songs and leave. But the crew, the unsung heroes, they're really the heart of the operation and you take care of yours. So I would just like to recognize you for a second and maybe other people can lead. Um, other people can follow and you're leading by example. So I commend you, Stephen Jenkins. Well, I mean, we're doing a small part by, uh, we made a, a, a EP um, called uh, So Alone, So Alive, um, where um, the five of us in the band um, got together via internet links um, and we're all in our little, you know, practice rooms and um, I played walking around my dining room. You can see it, it's, it's up on YouTube. Um, and uh, we put a donate button for Crew Nation. Uh, Crew Nation is, is a Live Nation initiative to get money to uh, the road crews who put on the shows that we all love to be at. And everybody who does that, it's a labor of love and it's all temp work. Um, you know, it's, you're, you're on, you're on for a for summer, the you're on for winter, and then that's it. So financially, uh, those people, uh, which is our community, the touring community is just getting devastated, uh, by this. So yeah, I'm really glad you brought it up because, you know, when you go to a show, everything that you see was set up that morning and yeah. it's put up. It's, 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 it's building a multi-story house, the PA, all of the staging, all of the lights, all of the back line with the gear and the amps, and it's all perfect. It's perfect. Meticulous. And we come on and we play, we go back and have some sushi, and that crew, our crew, goes back and they break it down in order, pack it up onto multiple semi-trucks, then we drive out into the night all night and the next morning they're up and they do it again. And so it's, it's, it's a really, it's a rugged life that they love to do. And I love to be part of. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that people, when you miss live music, if you can support, um, crew nation a little bit, that's a way that you can show your care. Yep. Um, so before I gotta go, be huh? I gotta go. no, I'm going to yeah. let you go. I want to say one last thing. Um, there was one, one, one girl said something in, uh, in the documentary. They asked her, what does Third Eye Blind mean to you? And she said, choosing freedom over what people expect from you. And that's what you've always done. And I just want to say, Stephen Jenkins, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of you, and you know that. So I look forward to seeing you again. Well, well thanks for having me on Radio.com. And um, just, uh, like, I feel like I'm talking to my people right now. So... Right. Um, stay with it. Stay safe. All right. Goodbye. Kisses. Give love to your dog. Give love to Brucey. Bye, everybody. Thank you for tuning Thanks. in. Thanks. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for all notifications from radio.com. While you're at it, why don't you check out some of our other great videos?